right, hello designers. We're gonna get you started on your project. So if you're watching this video, you probably chose the paper mosaic portrait for this unit of our class. And the focus is going to be on value. <clears throat> and value just means the lightness and darkness of a color. And the color will become your choice and will be fun for you to play around and mix to what you like. So um, value and color, once again, is the focus of, of um, this particular unit. And I hope as you're working on this, so you're also recognizing all the wonderful intensity of color that's in our life all around us and how um, as artists, um, we have some control in our work over over the colors obviously that we use but also like the intensity the vibrancy the richness of the colors that we use so really have fun with the juiciness of color during this project so this is an example of a portrait that was created um in sort of a mosaic style with lots of tiny little pieces of paper that have been torn and glued on in, in just the right place to match the value of a particular image. And a value just means the lightness and darkness of a color. So like right here where it's white and then sort of peach, these are some of the lightest values of this project and when you start to see something closer to black or um, kind of like this very deep brown maroon those are darker values so they just mean like the same version of a color but with either white added or a darker color added such as the color complement or black Okay, so after you've chosen your image and you've chosen a color palette, what you're going to do is take the bristle board that you've been given and create colors, excuse me, create values of a color that you're interested in working with. Um, this would have been the color that the artist started with, this sort of cadmium red in the center. And then the student added a little bit of white to create this one, more white to create, create this one, and more white to create this one. Over here, the student would have added one of two things. She could have added black, or she could have added the complementary color, which the complementary color just means the opposite color on the color wheel. So if you need a refresher, the opposite of red is green. And if you go to, gosh, let's see, the opposite of orange is blue. The opposite of violet is yellow. Um, and when you add the complement, you're going to get more of a neutral. Um, so that is one way to go about it. You can also add black in addition to the complement, or you can just go straight with black. So this would have been the next darker value, then the next, then the next, then the next. And these ones are kind of hard to tell apart from this particular image, but that's what she did. And this artist did something similar, and this artist did as well. And so did this one with her stack of violet. So once again, the color wheel, if you wanted to look at that again, always fun. Um, cool colors are these ones here, warm colors are these ones here. If you're pretty familiar with the idea of value, <clears throat> maybe you've done a project like this before, you could choose an advanced challenge of working with one of the colors, let's say yellow, in your highlights and purples in your shadows. That also makes for super cool projects. I don't have a lot of examples in this slideshow of that 
approach, um, but it is a cool way to go about it. I'm just going to show you some more examples. These ones are all the same hue, um, which is another way of seeing a pure color. This student, actually both of these students tore their pieces, but you can see different approaches. So this one on the right, all of the pieces are the same size. And this one on the left, the student was more particular about the shape and size of her particular pieces to, um, yeah, to work with the shapes of the values in a little more of like a defined and sharp way. These students also worked with lots of tiny pieces all torn approximately the same size and were really successful with those. This student on the right worked with sort of a variety of different sizes of pieces, um, which made for a nice contrast of her background with these large pieces um, to her profile in the tiny pieces. You'll start to recognize that how you tear the pieces can matter. So this student, in when she was tearing them, a lot of the white of the paper sort of shone through and created this sort of like grainy, um, kind of dissolving look to her piece. That's kind of cool. And if you want it to be a little more clean looking, then you would just pay attention to that as you're doing the tearing. So a note on technique um, and, and the photography. So first of all, my first choice would be for you to be the creator of the picture so that you photographed the, the reference photo that you're working of so that the piece is entirely yours. Um, if if after you go through the process of taking photos of either yourself or someone in your family, for instance, um, and you're still not satisfied, you can go back and work from images that you maybe had from the past or are in like a family album or are in a photograph. Um, these students, you can see, worked with, um, looks like, images of famous people. Um, this isn't my favorite approach, but ultimately the image that you choose just needs to be one that you're really interested in. So if you're more intrigued with this approach, I won't um, hold you back from that. So while we're here though, notice also again this sort of different technique in using paper. This student here, Elizabeth Warland, kind of went with more of like a, a very sharp pop art, almost looks like printmaking style of very carefully and precisely cutting with scissors out her shapes so that it's very, very precise. Um, and if you look super closely, she may have even actually like cut the pieces, put them together, and then cut them out in like larger chunks. Um, look closely at both the ones of Marilyn Monroe and this one here of um, Audrey Hepburn. And you can see that the Justin Bieber one was more of like a torn, more mosaic style placement. Okay, for process, after you've um, gone through the process of taking a bunch of pictures, looking through a bunch of pictures, and whenever you're ready to get started, you are going to be applying these papers in whatever technique to your mat board with glue. This is an example of one that I had started that's of my grandmother. Um, and you can see that I started from around the edges. You can start really from anywhere. That's up to you. 
But what I did want to show you about this particular one is A, the grid, B, that I've started marking out in pencil where the various values are. Notice I didn't finish yet with the face, but um, that's something that you would do too. Um, you can do all of the markings in pencil first and then go on top or kind of treat it section by section. That's sort of just up to you what feels best. Um, and then notice, I think I've got some, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got some zoomed in pictures here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, in the background, I chose to tear larger pieces of paper. And in the foreground, in her shirt here, I decided to cut more specific and controlled pieces of paper. So two different approaches. Um, you can decide what you like best, stick with all one, or play with a variety. That's kind of your artistic um, choice there. So here's another corner. Oops. Here's another one. Okay. Back to working with a picture. So first, like I said, I want you to work ideally with a picture that you've taken yourself. Um, profiles work beautifully because you've got this background that serves as a contrast to accentuate um, the shapes of the face. So what you're gonna do is take these photographs, have a few of them so that you have some different ones to choose from, and you're gonna use the Photos app on your computer to convert them to black and white. You can play with different contrasts and then crop to an eight by 10 so that it's the same ratio as your mat board, which is 16 by 20 inches. Um, I want you to do this with your three favorites and then submit those to Canvas and I'll give you some feedback on which I think, just based on my experience, will be the best one for you to try. So I'm going to hop over to photos just to show you that in case you're not familiar. Once I'm in photos and I've got the picture there, I'm going to edit it. So I would go up to edit. Excuse me, I'd go to image and edit tools. You can also just hit enter on your keyboard and it will do the same thing. And you can play with these different options. Your version of photos might look a little different than mine, but it will be it will have the same choices essentially. So a couple things that you're gonna do. We're going to use the filters to translate it to black and white so that we're isolating the values in a way that's easier to see. So I'm gonna work with this one. Then I'm going to go to adjust. I have some different adjustments here and I'm going to play down in the sharpen edges and pull that up so that I get a little more definition between my values. I can play with levels to make it lighter or darker. can also play with the light to do a similar thing here. If I go up to add, I might have some other possibilities, like maybe definition. Okay. If I go to noise reduction, did it do anything? Here we go. Um, what that does is just kind of smooths it out for me if it's a particularly pixelated image or what we would call in photography a noisy image. Um, all these things are super optional, but they're great tools to help you accentuate the values within the image. So I'm going to hit done. Nope, not yet. I'm going to go to crop. This part is most important. Hit crop, go to where it says aspect, change it to eight by 10, and you can move the image around to the right crop. 
that eight, the eight by 10 is gonna get multiplied by two to be 16 by 20, which is the same as your map board. Hit done. And then I've got a picture that I can print. Ideally, you can print. Okay, going back here. Okay. So this one you can see I didn't do quite as many edits. Um, this student actually worked with this image, went from here to here, she did this on her own, and ultimately made a piece that looked like this. Okay, you can get started on your grid on your canvas as well. You're gonna need to find a ruler, some other long straight edge, a tape measure, or even some string if you're in a pinch to help you grid out the mat board, and of course a pencil. Um, your mat board, like I said, is 16 inches by 20 inches, so I recommend starting by drawing lines every four inches. So ultimately you're gonna have four by four squares. Obviously, you want them to be right angled squares. Um, otherwise, they would be a polygon, right? So um, try and keep track of that and keep the lines that you make parallel to the edges of your paper. Um, you certainly can break this down into even smaller squares to get more detailed, just like um, this picture is more detailed. But if you're really familiar with drawing um, and are pretty confident in your sense of proportion, um, four by four is probably just a good place to start. You will want to acquire some glue, some sort of liquid form of glue I think is best. Glue sticks um, could work in a pinch, but the liquid glue is ultimately a little more permanent and will help your pieces stay on more. Um, you can apply the glue with a brush. So try to find um, maybe like two different sizes of brush for your different sizes of paper or just one small brush and designate that brush as your glue brush and make sure that you um, keep it in water when you're not using it and wash it out at the end of each session so that it doesn't get destroyed as you can imagine it would after using it with a lot of glue. Um, last tip is storing your work. So in between sessions of working on it, and this will be kind of a tedious um, but meditative and fun process. So you'll probably have a number of sessions of working on it now through the next few weeks. And in between those sessions, you're going to um, store it in a specific way so that it stays in the right um, state. Um, let your project dry just a little bit. It'll still be somewhat wet from all the glue, um, but we don't want it to be sopping wet. Um, and then you're going to lay it as flat as you can um, face up on some surface like a table. Take some wax paper that you just find in your kitchen usually um, and put a sheet or more. Maybe you have to tape some together so that it's big enough. Put a sheet of wax paper on top of it and then stack some heavy books or some other flat heavy items on top of the wax paper. And this is gonna help your project dry flat and stay flat because that mat board is really gonna want to curve. It's really gonna want to warp on you as it's absorbing all of that moisture on the top side. Um, just to keep yourself organized, grab yourself some envelopes, some folders, some baggies, even just some random paper that you fold in half and staple to keep track of all the loose and small pieces of painted papers that you're gonna have um, torn up as you're working on the project. Okay, that is a great start. Um, no need to do all of those steps right now, but that is what to expect going forward for this project from essentially the beginning to the end. All right, have fun.